A confident Boris Johnson wielded the axe today with a far more significant cabinet reshuffle than any commentator predicted. And oh, by the way, the PM's team insist this was all his own work and not influenced in any way by his very influential wife, Carrie. The big losers. His former loyal campaign boss, Gavin Williamson, axed after being widely regarded as one of the worst education secretaries ever. Dominic Raab stripped of his foreign secretary gig after botching the handling of the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. But he becomes deputy prime minister. Robert Jenrick dumped as housing secretary despite being heavily tipped as a rising conservative star. Then there were even bigger winners. The excellent Liz Truss, promoted to foreign secretary after doing a superb job in the international trade department. Nadim Zahawi, a good operator who will replace Williamson as education secretary after overseeing a successful vaccine rollout. Oliver Dalden who moves from the culture beat to become Tory chairman ahead of a potential 2023 election. Rishi Sunak and Priti Patel, who remain as Chancellor and Home Secretary, despite press speculation about their futures. There's lots of intrigue today, too. Michael Gove is essentially demoted to the middle-ranking housing brief. Why? Is Boris still smarting because of their epic historic battle? Or is there something else? going on. What about this from political reporter Adam Bolton, who said of the move, perhaps frankly, moving him out of the centre of government makes him more expendable if issues surrounding his personal life were to get out of hand. Whatever does he mean by that? Hmm, not sure. I also welcome Dowden's replacement as Culture Secretary Nadine Doris. I think she's the right woman to stop the woke mob and keep organisations like the BBC in tweet. I mean, listen to this that she tweeted in, in 2017. Left-wing snowflakes are killing comedy, tearing down historic statues, removing books from universities, dumbing down panto, removing Christ from Christmas and suppressing free speech. Sadly, it must be true. History does repeat itself. It will be music next. She would have been a good... GB News presenter too, I think. Reshuffles are historically risky, but Boris Johnson is at the peak of his powers and the moves today will only increase his grip on power. I hope he uses it wisely. Is there any more galling illustration of our soft-touch policing than the officer politely negotiating with eco-extremists who are clearly breaking the law by shutting down the M25 again, gluing their hands to the middle of the road and process. Take a look at this. Yeah, you heard that right. You heard that right. She even asked those vile scumbags if they <laughs> need anything. What the actual hell? These are anarchists. They're not peaceful protesters. They're dangerous criminals who must be stopped by authorities before they cause deadly chaos and carnage. And it actually came close to that today, as the police allowed 90 complete idiots from the Insulate Britain, an offshoot of the equally foolish Extinction Rebellion, to shut down five important junctions, including parts of the M25. And check this out, a 50-year-old woman had to be airlifted to hospital after a serious clash close to one of the protests. Now, sorry, police say they're currently investigating if these two incidents are leaked. As Tory MP Andrew Bridgen said, they are putting people's livelihoods and indeed lives at risk through their reckless behaviour. They don't care about what's good for the general public and they are little more than anarchists. Arrests were eventually made, but not until hours had passed in some cases, despite the fact they were illegally blocking a public highway. These egomaniacs compare themselves and their cause to Martin Luther King, the suffragettes and Mahatma Gandhi, proving how utterly delusional they are. The UK is leading the Western world when it comes to reducing our carbon emissions to net zero. If these activists had any balls, they'd actually take their protests to China, the world's biggest carbon emitter, but they know they'd probably be shot on the spot. 
Now, it's impossible to accept that Shamima Begum was telling the truth on Good Morning Britain today. The woman who once defended the revolting ISIS terror attack on the Manchester arena as justified, remember that, now claims she hadn't even heard of it. And she only made her egregious comments because she was afraid of reprisals from fellow women inside her Syrian refugee camp. You even made some comments later on in, an, in another interview about the Manchester arena bombing. You said it was justified, it was, uh, it was tit for tat, that because ISIS were being bombed by various parties, it was reasonable for ISIS to bomb back. What do you think about and what do you say about that now? I do not believe that one evil justifies another evil. I don't, I don't think that women and children should be being killed for other people's you know, motives and for other people's agendas. I, I did not know about the Manchester bombing when I was asked. I did not know that people were killed. I did not know that women and children were hurt because of it. So I, I was just speaking without knowing fully what I was talking about. And obviously I was afraid of the women again. I bet the government decision at the time to strip Begum of her British citizenship. I stand by that. To me, Begum stands as a lesson to other wannabe terrorists considering attacking the UK, that it's a decision with forever consequences. So apparently, in the uber-woke American media, telling a load of porky pies about your family in a nasty telly interview with Oprah Winfrey makes you influential. That's the only explanation behind Time magazine naming Harry and Meghan Markle among the most 100 influential people in the world today. Of course, it wasn't left to a journalist to write the sycophantic accompanying profile, but rather their chef friend, Jose Andre. He gushed. In a world where everyone has an opinion about people they don't know, the Duke and Duchess have compassion for the people they don't know. They don't just opine, they run towards the struggle. Well, I say it's sad and a real shame they don't have any compassion for the 95-year-old grieving queen. Someone needs to pass me the sick bucket. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.